Hi, this is Josh with Resort TV One. Today we're giving you a complete tour of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. We hope you enjoy the video. And this building is the main building of the resort, which features a five-story lobby that we'll look at in just a minute. And it's connected to the monorail station here at the Grand Floridian, which is one of three resorts at Walt Disney World to have a monorail station. And now we're underneath of the monorail station and also the place where cars come in to unload. And the monorail station makes the car unloading area much larger so that you can get out of the rain and still unload your things if you need to. And I love these two older antique vehicles here. So classy and I love that they're both white. You've got the carriage and of course this is a 1929 Cadillac. Just such a classy vehicle. Almost looks like a vehicle that Cruella de Vil could have driven except for it's a little bit bigger. but. Really nice looking car for sure. And then this carriage looks like something that could have pulled Cinderella to the ball, except for of course it's not a pumpkin, but very beautiful carriage. Here you can see some topiaries over there, Mary Poppins, and we'll take a closer look at them here in just a minute. And this is the main entrance to the resort. And we'll go in in just a minute. But I wanted to look at the landscaping outside because it's so well landscaped as, you, as you'd expect at a resort like this. And there you can see the monorail track. As well as a little sitting area here. And the Mary Poppins topiary there is a nice touch. Especially since the Grand Floridian Resort itself is themed in a Victorian style, so Mary Poppins fits right in. There's the monorail, leaving the station. I love this little garden of palm trees there. Really nice touch and very beautiful. And now let's step inside the amazing main lobby. The monograms on the floor mats there are a nice touch. And right away when you walk in, you can see that you're in a very elegant setting. The marble floors, even with the Grand Floridian monogram there on the floor, as well as the designs around, and you can see a hint of what's to come when you walk in to this awe-inspiring lobby. And as you look up, your mouth just drops open because it's such a beautiful space. There's just no other way to put it except for awe-inspiring and beautiful. There are these stained glass domes at the top of the ceiling there as well as beautiful chandeliers. Before we look at the lobby, that was just a taste, before we look at the lobby a little more, this is the check-in counter and you can see the gentleman in the old-style Victorian type outfit and he's one of the people that helps you check in. You can see the grand staircase over there which we'll check out in just a minute. And now let's take a look at the lobby in just a bit more detail. It's such a grand space again. The second floor of the lobby is actually all shops and restaurants. And then the third, fourth, and fifth floors are guest rooms and suites. And some of the biggest suites in the resort are in this main building, which is what you'd expect. You'd expect if you paid enough for a suite, which by the way, the presidential suite goes for $3,500 a night, according to some research I just did. The room rates here start at $650 a night, and I have stayed here one time, and it was a very amazing experience. It is expensive, but you get what you pay for in this case. This is just an amazing resort to even just be in, even if you're not staying here. I'd really advise just take some time and just enjoy this amazing lobby. And this bald eagle and flag sculpture is made out of chocolate by the Grand Floridian Bakery, which is pretty amazing. And here's the elevator over here, which is enclosed by a glass cage, so riders can see out and get a great view as they go up and down. And there you can see the elevator coming down right there. 
and it's right next to a grand piano. It's a Steinway grand piano to be exact, which is one of the best brands of grand pianos, and it's played by a Disney cast member at certain times during the day to provide a very relaxing ambiance to the lobby here. And here's a bird cage, which is very large and ornate. I'm not sure if there have ever been any birds in there. I haven't found any information about that, and I've never seen any, but it's a nice looking bird cage either way. And on the second floor balcony, you can see the place where the jazz orchestra sits, and they play at certain times during the evenings to give an amazingly classy ambiance to this lobby. And we'll take a look at the jazz orchestra setup in just a few minutes. There it is one more time, but again, we'll get up on the second floor and you can really see where they sit. There it shows you this is a chocolate sculpture. And this particular sculpture looks like the castle, but it's actually got this kind of an egg-shaped piece in the middle of it opening up with a glass slipper in the middle. So it's very, very creative and very beautiful. Especially since it's made out of chocolate, that makes it even more impressive to me. And during the Christmas season, in approximately this area, there's a gingerbread house, which is made up almost entirely of edible ingredients besides the structural elements, and it's large enough for someone to stand inside of. In fact, there's a shop that sells hot chocolate and gingerbread pieces, chocolate, and all kinds of other neat treats. So that's a pretty amazing thing to see during the holiday season, an almost entirely edible gingerbread house, large enough for people to stand in and sell baked goods out of. Something you should definitely see if you're here at Christmas. And you can always take the monorail over to the Grand Floridian from the Magic Kingdom if you want a break from the park. And anybody can come in. You don't have to be staying here to come into the resort. So now we'll take a look at some of the shops in the Grand Floridian main building here. And there are quite a few shops here and a lot of them feature some very upscale merchandise. And this particular shop, as you can see, is called Summer Lace. And we'll take a quick look around. And this sign is in front of the Garden View Tea Room and it talks about the Perfectly Princess Tea Party which is available, as well as other options in this particular tea room. And this is where you enter it next to the shop that we were just in. It's just right off the main lobby and it's got an excellent view of the courtyard just outside. And here's the other entrance to the tea room and it's closed now but you can see cast members in there having a meeting. And right next to the tea room, there's this elegant little sitting area next to a staircase that goes up to the second floor. I love all these little touches inside of this resort. Everything just to make it as classy as possible. And here's another shop, the Sandy Cove Gifts and Sundries. And we'll take a look inside. Here they've got some food and snack items, as well as some wine and even some wine glasses. And there are even some coolers here with some cold drinks inside. There's also a lot of Grand Floridian specific merchandise here, shirts and sweatshirts and other types of items, which is nice. And here's another look at some of the merchandise and you can see some of the snack items. And it's open daily from 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. And here's a really interesting piece of artwork that's a very subtle advertisement for the Disney Vacation Club but it's a Victorian style beach retreat complete with the clothing that you'd expect for that time period and I love the cardboard cutout style of art. It's a lot of fun. And there's the very subtle Disney Vacation Club sign. And this is the hallway in front of the Sandy Cove gift shop and this hallway is, comes off of the main lobby and goes back into another room that splits off into two restaurants. One of these restaurants, the Grand Floridian Cafe, is currently closed for refurbishments, but the other restaurant, 1900 Park Fair, is still open.
They've got these two carousel horses in front of the regular entrance to the Grand Floridian Cafe. But here's 1900 Park Fair. And this is a character dining experience. I've never eaten here before, but as I understand it, the characters included in this experience are Mary Poppins characters, as well as Cinderella. And there's a large organ inside that's amazing that plays melodies throughout your experience. Now back in the main lobby, and here's the grand staircase. It has the main staircase in the middle and two smaller ones on either side. And the carpeting even kind of looks like the pumpkin carriage in Cinderella there with the Grand Floridian logo in the middle of it. And to me, these grand staircases are just so impressive and very important to have in a hotel that aims to be as classy as this one is. And speaking of Cinderella, there she is with Prince Charming. And it's inlaid in the marble floor. And this is the elevator we looked at earlier that's got a glass cage on the other side, but this is the entrance. And now on the second floor, we'll look at one of the sitting areas up here, which is pretty quiet now. As well as one of the hallways, and the flooring is all marble, so it gives it a very elegant look. There's the cage of the elevator a little closer. And now let's look out into the lobby from the second floor. And I'll just let you enjoy the view for a bit. And now we'll take a look at another shop here in the Grand Floridian, and this one's called M. Mouse Mercantile, and of course that stands for Mickey Mouse, and there's his picture right there in the middle of the sign. So we'll step inside and take a look at what type of merchandise they offer. There you can see they have a wide assortment of Mickey Mouse merchandise, which you'd expect since the namesake of the shop itself is Mickey, the 2017 version of Mickey Mouse. And here's some Grand Floridian specific merchandise. You've got some men's polos and t-shirts that are really nice, as well as some women's merchandise with Grand Floridian logos on it. Even some water bottles. And I hadn't seen these plates before. They may be elsewhere at Walt Disney World, but I haven't seen them and I thought they were really neat. And the shop itself is quite large with windows overlooking the Grand Floridian Vacation Club Villas, as well as the rest of the resort. And here's the view from outside those windows. You can see the walkway that goes to the Vacation Club Villas. And there's one of the pools, that's the beach pool got a neat kids play area inside that we'll look at in just a minute and here's a map of the entire resort it's a really large resort and there are quite a few shops and restaurants as you'll see throughout this tour and here's the Grand Floridian monorail station monorail station boasts a great view of the landscaping at the entrance to the resort and just like at the Polynesian and Contemporary Resorts, you're required to pass through security before you get onto the monorail. That way, when you get to Magic Kingdom, you can just proceed directly to the turnstile and tap your magic band to enter the park. And here's another look at one of those amazing marble floor logos with the Grand Floridian monogram on it. And now we'll look, right as you come off of the monorail, this is the view that you get which is amazing and it's very awe-inspiring. So if you come over here from the Magic Kingdom just to check out the resort, this is the first thing that you're gonna see. And even though in the video it's very amazing to look at, you really need to see it for yourself. So plan a trip over here next time you're at Walt Disney World if you've never been into the lobby of the Grand Floridian. It's worth a trip. And here's a basin store that's adjacent to the monorail station.
And this is the Ivy Trellis Salon. And here's another look at some beautiful designs that are inlaid into the marble floor right in front of the elevator here on the second floor. And all these little details make this resort just so classy and elegant. Speaking of which, here's the jazz orchestra set up. You can see the piano and the drum set and the places where all the other musicians sit. And here you can see the sign reserved for the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra. And if you notice right there at the very end, there's a large metal instrument looks like a saxophone and it is that's actually a bass saxophone so that's one of the larger saxophones in the saxophone family and has a really fun sound and now we'll take a look at the lobby again just a little bit more from the second floor and now this is Meisner's lounge and it's on the second floor directly above the tea room and it's a nice place to grab a drink and just enjoy the sounds of the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra that plays right behind this area. And I love the carnival style artwork here right outside the lounge there. And this is the entry area for two of the most famous restaurants at the Grand Floridian Resort. Citrico's and of course Victoria and Albert's and it's a very long elegant hallway that leads down to these very famous and very classy restaurants now, of course they're very pricey restaurants but the experience is I'm told very amazing I haven't eaten at either one of these restaurants but they're both on my list and here's the main reception area for these two restaurants and this is the check-in counter. Now Citrico's goes off to the right there and it's open, you can see into it. But Victoria and Albert's is a lot more exclusive type of a restaurant. And so it has its own private entrance there. And you can see that it's won the AAA Five Diamond Award, which is the highest award that AAA gives restaurants. And I'm sorry about the reflection, but this is the menu for Victoria and Albert's. It even has a little bit of a spiel there about the chef's table. It is $250 a person by the way and that's without wine, drinks, and things like that so it's definitely an amazing experience but it isn't cheap for sure. And this is Citrico's. And of course, it's not dinner time, so they're just preparing for dinner here at this point, but it's a very beautiful restaurant as well. And now we'll look at another store on the second floor called Commander Porter's. And this is a men's shop. And there's a lot of really cool, classy merchandise that has a Disney flair to it. And the windows in the back of this store boast a fantastic view of both the Grand Floridian Vacation Club Villas as well as the Polynesian Resort on the other side of the Seven Seas Lagoon here. And now we're outside the main lobby in the courtyard. And you can see the courtyard pool way back in the background as well as the fountain. And I love this particular area, the courtyard. It gives a village green type of an ambiance and it almost appears that you could get a croquet set out and play croquet on the green so it's a great place and a really fun area to visit and now we'll take a closer look at the fountain right next to the courtyard pool and then a look at the pool itself And this is the quieter of the two pools. 
the other pool has more activities for children so you'll find of course kids and families at both pools but there'll probably be a little bit more activity at the beach pool which we'll look at a little bit later and now here's a great shot of the fountain and the main building of the Grand Floridian Resort which we were just in it's such an imposing building from the inside but it looks amazing from the outside as well And this summer house, I'm not exactly sure what it is other than restrooms. At least that was all that was open when I visited. It looks like there may have been a snack stand here or something at one time, but again, all that was there at this point was a couple of restrooms. Here's a look across the Seven Seas Lagoon at the Wedding Pavilion as well as the Polynesian Resort and the Vacation Club Villas here at the Grand Floridian as well as the beach. It's another look from another angle at the main building of the resort. I'm really in awe of the Victorian style architecture of this resort. It's reminiscent of the resorts that were built along the Florida coast in the early 1900s. And now we'll take a look at the beach pool and its amazing water play area for kids. And you can see they can just get soaked by that hat up there. And by the way, this play area is themed to the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland. So that's the Mad Hatter's hat up there that just drenched everybody. And there's even a water slide that we'll look at here in just a minute, a little bit closer. And the Vacation Club villas that are directly behind this pool, by the way, are fairly new, as is this pool. The villas themselves were finished in 2013, so they haven't been around too long. And there's another look at the kids' play area, which again is themed after Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter. And here's another look at the exterior of the main building. And we can look all the way over to the monorail station with the monorail entering the station. Now both the express and the resort monorails enter these stations, but only the resort monorails stop at the station. The express monorails, as most of you know, continue to move through the station without stopping. And now we'll look at the walkway that links the Grand Floridian Resort, main resort, to the Vacation Club Villas part of the resort. It's quite a long walkway, but luckily it is covered because, as you know in Florida, rainstorms come and go very quickly. Unfortunately, sometimes they don't go quite as quickly as we'd like. So it's a nice long walkway, but... When you get to the end of the walkway, you're rewarded with this amazing fountain that's in front of the resort here. And here's a look at the exterior of the Vacation Club Villas. And now we'll step inside and look at the lobby of the villas. The lobby has this amazing penguin themed fountain that we'll look at here in just a minute. There's also a TV area for kids. And it's not nearly as big as the main lobby, but it's still a really gorgeous space. So there's the penguin fountain, which is a lot of fun. And I really love the chandeliers here in this area, as well as the fact that the ceiling goes all the way up to the top of the building. So you've got a very impressive entryway here, even in the Vacation Club Villas. And here's a really nice carousel horse, which is one of two in the main lobby. 
and by the way, the combination of the carousel horses as well as the penguins indicates that we have a Mary Poppins theme here in this part of the resort. And we saw the Mary Poppins topiary in front of the main building, so that's definitely a theme that is featured throughout the resort. And here's the spa, which actually is pretty far away from the main building, so many people may not know where it's located unless they look at a map, but this is where it is. And there you can see the monorail running past the wedding pavilion and onto the Polynesian. And this is actually the entry building to the wedding pavilion, which is called Frank Studio, where you can plan your wedding. And you can see the wedding chapel itself just through the trees there. And now we're on the other side of the Grand Floridian Vacation Club Villas. It's a large imposing building right along the shore of the Seven Seas Lagoon here. And we'll take a look out into the lagoon and just admire the beautiful scenery here. You can see all the way to the Magic Kingdom here and Space Mountain. And there's a better look at the Wedding Pavilion Chapel, which has a great view of the Magic Kingdom. And you can of course see the Polynesian Resort as well as the bungalows at the Polynesian Resort along the water. And there you can see the rest of the Grand Floridian Resort just across the waterway there. And here's the other side of the beach pool and you can see the rock formation that forms the water slide in this particular pool. And there's a look at some water mouse boats that are out in the Seven Seas Lagoon there having a great time. And you can rent the water mouse boats here at the Grand Floridian and we'll look at the marina here in just a minute. I love these flower petals on the ground right in front of the courtyard and fountain area here. And there's another look at the main resort building. And from this point you have two choices. You can go around the back side of the main building and you'll get to Gasparilla Island Grill, which is actually a food court at the Grand Floridian that a lot of people don't know exists. And then if you go to the right here, you'll end up going down towards the boat launch to the Magic Kingdom, as well as Narcusi's restaurant. So we'll first head around towards the back side of the main building, and you can actually see some black covers over the windows at the Grand Floridian Cafe, because it's under refurbishment. But I have eaten at the cafe, and it's a really nice place to eat. And making our way past the Grand Floridian Cafe, we'll get to the Gasparilla Island Grill. And until recently, I wasn't aware that this particular resort had a counter service style or food court style restaurant. And it's really nice that they do. Even though it's not a gigantic food court like you'll find in a moderate or at a value resort, it still exists and it's nice that if you don't particularly want to eat at a table service restaurant, especially for a quick lunch, you can grab a quick bite to eat here at this food court. So we'll look at some of the menu options and some of the different counters where you can get various varieties of food. And continuing on to the rear of the food court area here, there is a small arcade. And it's got some really nice sitting areas for parents to wait for their kids to play. And there's a small assortment of games. And besides the food court, there's also a front entrance to this arcade. So it's called Arcadia Games. And directly across from the Gasparilla Island Grill, there's this nice little water inlet where you can rent various types of watercraft. You can also see Cinderella Castle across the way. So there are lots of different types of boats. There's the little water mouse boats that we saw earlier, as well as these larger pontoon boats that are a lot of fun for families to rent, and you can sail around the Seven Seas Lagoon. But the best way to sail around the Seven Seas Lagoon is on a yacht like the one that we just looked at. Of course, you'll pay for that experience, and we'll look at the prices right here.
And now we're back in the courtyard and looking at the courtyard pool so we can get our bearings and head back on the other side of the resort. We're going to head back towards Narcusis and also the Magic Kingdom boat launch area. But first I want to showcase these amazing courtyards and village greens that are in front of a lot of the resort buildings here. It's just such a relaxing place to walk around. And there you can even see the Contemporary Resort in the background across the Seven Seas Lagoon there. And now we'll head on over to Narcusis. Narcusis is unique in the Grand Floridian restaurants because it's in the back of the resort away from the main building. But that particular setting gives Narcusis an advantage because it has a beautiful Seven Seas Lagoon view while you're dining. And here's the menu so you can check out and see if you'd like to try this restaurant at some point. Apologize for the reflection, but hopefully you can see enough to get some good information about the menu options here. And now we're at the Magic Kingdom boat launch ramp, and from here you can take a boat to the Magic Kingdom as well as the Polynesian Resort. And there's the backside of Narcusis, as well as the backside of the Grand Floridian Resort itself. Well, that about wraps up our complete tour of the Grand Floridian Resort. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Bye bye Now that you've finished watching this video, be sure that you're subscribed for all the latest updates. Also, check out some other great videos on our channel. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Bye bye